Hi Sanchit, welcome to the pod. Glad to have you here. As a tech entrepreneur, I'm trying to solve any problem focused towards Indian market because like dealing with Indian market has been my strength. They were operating manually and with that's where I saw that that there is a huge gap. So sometimes I've seen that policies are operating at 150 loss ratio, 150% loss ratios. And if your policy is operating at 150% loss ratio, so you can imagine that your premium is going to double next year and double means your budget is going to 2x which does not happen that creates more problem i think the most important thing is to choose the right insurance companies who are more technologically sound like do they have apis in place do they have wireless claim reimbursement processes in place are they big enough to handle your claims as well will they honor the claims if your claim ratio goes beyond 100% i think the most critical part which i personally recommend is to have maternity this is one claim which is very positive and uh, it's a very good benefit uh, benefit just hear the customer out and communicate more when things are going bad rather than communicating more when things are going good when things are going good they are going good you don't need to yeah. <laughs> communicate a lot at that time right Well, Sanjit, uh, before we get started, I'm sure a lot of Bangalore folks listening in will already know you. But uh, for everyone else, uh, can you just quickly introduce yourself? Who is Sanjit, and what is Sanjit up to? Hi, my name is Sanjit. I am uh, co-founder and CEO of Passcare. Uh, Passcare is an employee insurance and benefits platform. Uh, we started the company in 2021, and before that, I was uh, running this company called Townscript. Uh, which is an events platform from 2013 to 2020 uh the company previous one was bought over by bookmyshow in 2017 yeah that's been my uh, a bit about my professional journey and before that i did my engineering from 9 to 13 in pune yeah it's amazing in fact i used to use townscript back in pre covid for all the running events i think all of that was was on townscript Yes, yeah, we are we are okay, pretty okay, popular yeah. in marathon segment. Oh, you yeah, you run yeah. marathons? I I've unfortunately stopped now. <laughs> I should pick it up, but yeah, the the couple that I did, it was all the tickets were from there. It was very small back then. In each community, there were few of us trying to find where do we get tickets, and we saw oh, it's on town script. Nice. Yeah, uh, we were so such a, we were well known in marathons actually. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that brings me to the next question that uh, that's. town scripts like ticketing that's a different business uh insure tech right. insurance is another different business i'm very curious like um, what were the problems that you saw in this space you know when you were doing your research when you were doing what's next that led you to this path of starting up in uh, what is essentially insure tech a very corporate business right so yeah the the common thing in both the businesses is that there is tech right so uh, hmm. uh so i see myself as an as a tech entrepreneur and trying to solve the uh, problem any problem uh, focused towards indian market because like dealing with indian market has been my strength because of my professional career so uh, like when we were building in event space so uh, it was a good experience overall as an entrepreneur um, as a company we i as an entrepreneur i saw the full life cycle of the business right from starting up to getting acquired but one regret i was carrying from my previous company was that the events in india is not a very large market as you rightly said that marathon is a niche space similarly uh, um, there are other segments as well in events but they are not very large uh, from the perspective of entrepreneur right so so next time i thought like whenever i'm starting a new company so it has to be in a very large market so mm-hmm. uh, i had a different perspective of looking at the problems at that time it's very hard to sort of uh decide what to do uh, ne- uh, like how to start a company right so what kind of idea you should pursue so this was actually in 2019 i i uh, like like i was evaluating ideas in financial services overall right so So financial services is very important for uh, humans on on a day to day basis because we deal money is the currency well, uh, uh, rupee is the currency and money is a way of sort of exchanging mm-hmm. uh, the value right so uh, i i thought that it's a very large space and i started seeing banking financial services and also insurance 
um, and there was one trigger mm-hmm. actually which led me like my car got hit and then it led me to go a little deeper in the space and when from that lens actually i started exploring this idea a little deeper and then so personally b2b has been my strength so i started seeing this lens space from b2b perspective right so uh, and from while thinking or while uh, deep diving into the uh, space as a whole uh, i found out that insurance in insurance there are group products which is which are fine uh, first is your human related insurances uh, which are employee insurance as we say right uh, health insurance life insurance accidental insurance and then we have uh, commercial insurance products which are more of related to your business insurance which are like your liability of the business the directors or uh, property fire and those kind of products and in that specifically if i just focus on the employee insurance part so uh, found out that it so even the commercial insurance is also very manual by the way uh, found out that the whole process of buying to administration to claims uh, has been uh, happening manually for a very decent amount of time right so since its inception in india right so uh, there are traditional brokers and agents uh, and also the insurance companies who have been good at underwriting the product uh, and underwriting the risk but when it comes to like giving the whole experience of serviceability right by accessibility i mean that uh, giving accessibility to smaller companies um and the product has been fairly for the larger companies and for the larger companies the serviceability has been a problem right so uh, there have been traditional brokers so brokers have done a good job um uh, in terms of consulting the client with what kind of plans they should have but when it comes to the operational uh, work it it requires uh, a lot of manual intervention so when it comes to core hr operations you have uh, companies like darwin box great hr keka and similar kind of uh, companies who have done a good job when it comes to solving the payroll and hr operations but when it comes to benefits uh, especially benefit starts from first benefit that you give apart from salaries uh and pf is health insurance right so there it it has been operating had been operating manually for a very long period of time uh so uh, over phone calls and emails right so the hr downloads the data um then from the payroll or hr software then sends the email to uh, the employees to fill up their uh, in a google form or a google sheet to or email uh, to sort of fill their family member details once they collate all the data then they email that data to uh, to their broker or the uh, in agent or insurer and then they reach out to the insurance company uh, to sort of place the business and place the endorse the uh, people in the policy and then they get their health cards so they give the data to the hr uh, the hr uh sort of manually sends emails of all the health cards to to the to the employees so all of this process um they were operating manually and with that's where i saw that that there is a huge gap especially from the hr's perspective and from the employees perspective as well so there is a lot of gap that we saw that um uh, there from the employees perspective they don't know what's covered and what's not covered because they don't get the uh policy details uh and hr does email them but still they miss out on that uh many of the times and then they a lot of problems in the data also right sometimes you may uh, because there's a lot of manual work happening so uh employee might fill up wrong name or wrong uh details and that which will lead to again correction at the time of claim and then they don't know how to claim and when they go to claim so there are two types of claim processes right one is cashless and one is reimbursement in case the hospital is not in the network list there they don't know what's the process they have to go through a paperwork process so all of this whole uh, scheme of the things we, we found out that it can be simplified through uh, a platform right uh, and creating a tech platform so we started out 
building that um, uh, initially and then gradually i also realized that it's not only the problem of administration for health insurance but all benefits you deal to deal with five vendors for, for say for health checkup or say tax benefit so and but for hr operations you do have a good tools you have good tools in place so there uh, uh, so for hr operations the employee gets one lo single login but for benefits they get three to five emails from hr and generally we miss out and as a matter of the fact you know better than me that employer does spend on an average 5 to 8% on the benefits right so it's a, it's a big amount and if it goes unutilized it's a loss to the company and from the employee's perspective it's a loss to the employee as well because they're not able to take the best benefit out of whatever the employer is doing for them so all of that we realize that we need to create a system uh, which consolidates all the benefits and makes the whole process very streamlined um, and that's how the gap was found and uh, we started working on this problem yeah. amazing amazing yeah i mean um, you're right i mean this this um, insurance comes in at your worst moment right and then in that worst moment you are sort of left scrambling sending mails talking to your hr you don't even know where your cards are so back in even back yeah. in 2017 18 like you used to get physical cards and i had no idea of what was there what is covered right uh, and you're right we used to send emails hr has always send emails but you, you don't know where that email is especially new joinee sort of always got missed out and the point that you said this right. has had this had actually happened uh, uh, the name was wrong <laughs> so during claims uh, it didn't go through right uh, faced all of right. that uh, uh, but great just um, that leads me to the next question sanjit uh, uh, see the, the just some pre context the uh, folks who are listening in mostly is from the hr industry right and uh, what i have understood talking to a lot of people is uh, while uh, like you said 5 6% is uh, sometimes even more is spent on benefits it's spent on insurance but somehow the knowledge that our community has about the nuances of uh, insurance corporate insurance is is little on the minimal side right and i wanted to take this opportunity uh, and there's no better person than you to just educate folks uh, folks listening in from the hr community that what are all the deep nuances that one needs to know right what what this world is what do the various terms mean right as broadly as we can go right yeah uh, very lucky to have got an opportunity to speak to hrs right so thank you for that ranak so uh, as a matter of the fact we survive and thrive because of hrs so uh, so just to talk on the specifically on the topic and I, I think what i have personally observed is when is when the companies are young uh, and the especially the hrs who are just starting up we do have seen gaps but when it comes to the the companies were mature we've seen that hrs mm -hmm. know better than we we know uh, yeah. many other times that's true so yeah. yeah so couple of quick insights that i can share and we do many sessions and we have a lot of content on our website as well on this topic um uh, is that see you have to think from two perspectives right so one is uh what best can we do for the com for the employees in whatever mm -hmm. limited budget we have right so mm -hmm. sometimes so i see that i mean we have to as an hr we have to align ourselves with the ceos and the cfos as well right so and i think the best thing to do is first get aligned mentally that like, uh, what is the budget that the company is carrying right so per employee and then um when we have the budget approval from the ceo or the cfo right then we sort of plan out what best can we do in that budget for the team um best from the perspective of giving the benefits to the employees best from the perspective of long term sustainability of the policy as well right so um uh, sometimes i think th and that's where uh, my job becomes more critical right so to guide you uh, as an hr that how can we design the policy not just for this year but for next 5 years right the company is going to grow um so what happens is if you open the policy a lot uh, the claim ratios so uh, so just to give you an example right my job is to ensure that your claim ratio as a consultant 
my job is to ensure that i guide you in such a way that i am giving you the best of the best benefits based on the healthcare costs that are there but at the same time my job is to ensure that your policy does not bleed because mm-hmm. we have certain budgets in in our company right and we don't want those budgets so sometimes i've seen that policies are operating in 150 loss ratio 150% loss ratios and if your policy is operating in 150% loss ratio so you can imagine that your premium is going to double next year and double means your budget is going to 2x which does not happen right so you don't get approval from the ceo then that creates more problem so we have to design the benefit policy in such a way if there are three variables one is what's the budget of the company we cannot go overboard because then i have designed something and then i go to the ceo then he said no no we don't want this we don't want this we don't want this just mm-hmm. come back second is uh how do we design when it considering the healthcare cost in in mind uh so that i can in whatever limited budget i have i give the best of the best plan and third mm-hmm. is when i'm giving the best of the best plan i should design it in such a way that my claim ratio does not go beyond say 105% or 100% in an ideal case scenario so we have to think from the perspective of the insurance company as well so claim ratio should ideally for the client should be 100% right again uh, claim ratio is basically the amount i have paid uh, rather the amount i have uh, claimed versus the amount i have paid right yeah so the claim ratio is say if you paid like 10 lakh rupees mm-hmm. throughout the year not hmm. only uh, at in so inception not only inception but because once you add employees in your policy so hmm. so policy is for one year generally hmm. uh, so for say today is july 13th and i start july 13 24 to july 13 25 hmm. um so like for example sanjit joins work india uh, hmm. in say august 13 so for mm-hmm. sanchit you will have to pay premium for 11 months right Correct. so pro rata on i mean mm-hmm. uh, based on your additions and deletions uh, people joining jo- you're leaving mm-hmm. so you get policy for say uh, for pro rata months and then once the renewal comes in so then you get the policy for that for sanchit malik next year you get for 12 months so mm-hmm. there is something there is a term called earned premium for from the insurance perspective so on a monthly basis you have people you're joining and you're leaving right so mm-hmm. on a on a combined basis whatever premium you paid till the end of the year is your earned premium if the premium mm-hmm. at the inception was 10 lakh and then monthly some people join and became 12 lakhs so you have to calculate on 12 lakh what is your icr in your when you get a claim mis there is a term called mm-hmm. icr so there are two things which you will get from the insurance company or the tpa which is claim mis or claim dump So claim mm-hmm. MIS is like a PDF which gives you an analysis of what is your uh, how the your claims are how claims have been functioning. You should calculate ICR percentage. That's the most critical term. Uh, it's it's okay. uh, based on the uh, earned premium. Yeah. So ideally, just coming back to the point, right? So ideally, your claim ratio should be hundred percent or little less than that actually. Uh, if it is less than eighty percent, uh, also means that you. might be you might have overpaid as well because you spent 100 mm. rupees you actually combined mm. consumed only 60 70 rupees of that so that means you are maybe you were you you could have paid less so on an ideal case mm. scenario you should target say design the policy in such a way so sometimes i've seen that there are a lot of negotiations that happen to get l1 pricing uh but uh, see in a way you will end up paying the same amount or even a little bit more because today if you negotiate so hard that means your premium will go less but claim ratio mm. will go bad next year because mm. you the insurers undercut to get the account and then in that case so in a way i i tell them i tell the client that let's target that much of claim ratio um so couple of critical things that that i think of course we can do, go very deep but five six things i think i feel that uh, we should look at while designing the policy is first is my job is to ensure that you get the right insurance company as well um mm-hmm. so there are say we can bucket them into three four parts 
like one is public sector insurance companies uh, which have their own pros and cons as well um, then there are tier one private insurance companies or like other level of private insurance companies so i think the most important thing is to choose the right insurance companies who are more technologically sound like so i do they have apis in place uh, do they have paperless claim reimbursements processes in place right um, are they big enough to handle your claims as well um, um, are, will they honor the claims if your claim ratio goes beyond 100% they are supposed to honor but sometimes they start so there sometimes you feel there are challenges but overall i think choosing the right insurance company is very critical from the type of company that like if you are not very budget conscious that you can go little to a to little premium insurance companies um then we are very clear as as a company that we want to recommend the right insurance company that i feel is my 80% of the job then on the desi- designing the terms and conditions i think uh, so my uh, some of the insights is that generally like a very like uh, very employee friendly companies they generally offer 5 lakhs uh, worth of some insured right um in my personal experience 90% of the claims are generally in a, in any policy are less than 3 lakhs so if you if the budget is an issue so you can take a cover of 3 lakhs and uh, that that so you somewhere between that is good enough so employee spouse kids is something which generally uh, should be offered uh, i don't recommend we don't recommend only offering for employees there your cost can go somewhere between 7 to 12000 rupees per employee or 7 to 11000 somewhere between that i mean it depends on i'm just giving you ballpark numbers between what kind of some insured that you go on with uh if you have if your company of can afford then people can go with employee spouse kids and parents right so with parents you are it becomes three times of what you get in employee spouse kids so mota mota if you can imagine that it should be somewhere around 25 to 30000 for a 3 lakh worth of 20 to 30000 i'm giving you ranges please don't kill me if it's yeah. out of the any of the ranges when you are negotiating by yourself so somewhere between that uh just to give some estimate on the 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 rates right then on couple of in, interesting uh terms that you should definitely be careful about uh, one is the room rent limit so mm-hmm. the room rent limit uh i've seen sometimes it's 1% sometimes it's 2% on normal room rent it's mm. a 2% or 1% of the sum insured mm. which is say if your sum insured is 3 lakh then room rent limit is of 1% is 3000 uh, and 2% is 6000 on 3 lakh that means you can go in the room uh for equal to or less than 6000 you'll mm. there will not be any deductions on the claims so uh, so what happens in room rent is that if there is a deduction so if say sometimes i've seen if for example especially in the ceo's case they go mm. end up uh, being in uh, residential suite uh, which is mm. the most expensive room in the hospital the charges might be 15 to 30000 rupees mm. uh, or maybe 13 to 30000 rupees uh, and then when they come back they say that hey we have so much of deduction in the claim uh, mm. and that happens because of the room rent limit so mm. you should know what kind of room rent limit you should have uh generally in a city like bangalore or gurgaon or about mumbai uh you can get twin ac room uh for almost 7 to 9000 rupees but if you go in like mm. the expensive hospitals then your single ac room may start from 12 13000 mm. but generally like i had a surgery last last year i my my room was 6000 uh, it was a go- government hospital so which was single ac room so now the call is do you want to keep a no room lamp, rem, no room rent limit or you want to keep a room rent limit i generally personally recommend a room rent limit because mm-hmm. we don't want to 
see employees not aware they end up being in mm-hmm. any kind of a room which ends up making your policy bleed so we have to keep mm-hmm. a balance how can we keep so generally it's good to keep the room rate limit from 6 to 12000 rupees because see okay. it depends like for your if your company is doing phenomenally well or we see global companies they don't have room rate limit in that case you can keep it no room rate but if your company is like selling to indian company company and then you have limited uh revenues and all of that whatever it is right so you keep some limit because the policy does mm-hmm. not bleed next year but mm-hmm. yeah inform your employees to go in what kind of room that you should go at the time of claim so that there is no surprise mm-hmm. second thing Sanjay, isn't, uh, isn't there the problem with room rent limit that if you keep it open um uh, doctors may end up misusing it yeah, yeah. that's another problem as well so <laughs> it's a, it's actually customer awareness problem more than i i, I feel because if you're not aware mm-hmm. then there is a scope of uh, misuse right so from any of the sites right so um yeah that's why i think we it's in retail policies i recommend not to have a room rent because mm-hmm. retail policies yeah. individual policies are um written at a very large group level and you should have a no room rent capping if you're buying for your personal use but mm-hmm. if you're buying for the company it's okay to have a limit because see we are giving it as a benefit uh, as mm-hmm. hrs and we don't want the company's budget see somewhere or the other company will cut the budget uh, mm-hmm. if the market goes bad like as you see right now it is right so mm-hmm. you just want to keep sane when things are even good right so it's better to keep a room rent capping but you should know what you're doing so uh second is uh um uh, i think we covered on the there are some diseases which are related to old age if you are giving a parental cover uh, right mm-hmm. so uh, cataract is there uh, then uh, prostate is a very common problem in males uh, old age problem and then knee replacement is a very common old age problem so mm. uh, if you are having a parental cover you should be aware that these kind of claims will come in very frequently and mm. uh, uh so there are two choices right so uh, like for a lens for a cataract lens uh, um it's just a lens so you get a good lens for 30000 rupees in india right now so sometimes because employee is unaware you the employee might mm. end up taking a 1 lakh rupees lens uh and if there is no capping there so again it, there is a scope mm-hmm. of bleeding in the policy so the H, as an hr you should be aware of that right so what you are getting into right then i think the most critical part which i personally recommend is to have maternity so because mm-hmm. of the indian country is very young and we have a lot of people between 25 to 40, 35 to 40 right so this is one one claim which is very positive right Uh, mm-hmm. otherwise when you go to the hospital there, there are only uh, some calamity in the life but for this you go happily and uh, mm-hmm. it's a very good benefit uh, benefit uh, uh, what i'm personally observing is that um, generally companies offer from 60000 so for normal delivery the the cost is not very high but for c section mm-hmm. that's where the employees start getting hurt right when it financially so that's where i think what as an hr you can do is at least try to keep 75000 as a maternity package limit minimum if you can you can do that and keep it up to 1 lakh so mm. that is something which i personally recommend uh, as well so uh, uh, generally like if you go to like the dedicated good hosp- like maternity related hospitals and mm. in cities like bangalore we are on a standard basis if you go for a lower room also they are charging 1 1 to 1.2 lakhs yeah. so at least so some of is. some part of yes yeah, sorry that's so like one is like a package whole delivery package yeah so that's where i think um, i think it's better to have uh, like at least 75000 uh, and if you can afford 1 lakh c section especially c section normal you can keep it 50 also or 60 also uh depending on your corporate's budget uh that's one thing which is sort of critical uh 
then if you want to offer parental cover and then uh, you are a little skeptic because see parental claims can go to any level right so i've mm-hmm. seen a lot of policies bleeding so uh, there is no harm in putting a 10% copy on parental policy um okay uh, which also brings a lot of sense of responsibility in the employee as well copy means the employee will be paying at the time of claim right okay so 10% Not means employee is paying 10% yeah so if the, the claim amount is yeah so if the claim amount is 2 lakh rupees uh then the employee will pay say 20000 rupees got it so based on that the employees also a little conscious about what kind of mm-hmm. uh hospital they are going ahead with right so so that is also one thing which you could look into but anyways if your comp- company can afford then go ahead just keep it open as well. uh, keep, don't keep a copy sometimes i've seen that companies are like hey i i want to offer to my an, an option to my employees to give parental cover but i don't have a budget so mm. uh that's a very interesting play right so what happens here is that see insurance as a concept is that pe- 100 people get together they they make the payment and mm. out of them 10% will actually claim so the 90% of 90 people uh the other 90 folks are actually paying for the first 10 people right mm-hmm. so uh now what happens generally in companies which we see is that only 20 people sign up out of 100 or 20% participation or 30% participation mm-hmm. and generally these are the folks who actually uh uh want to have a claim right so then if mm-hmm. if you're paying say 5 rupees Uh, per employee then and your claim is 100 rupees so then uh, your policy will not sustain so that's where mm-hmm. your hr's role becomes very important so if your company doesn't have a budget so one thing is maybe you can make it compulsory to deduct from their ctc mm-hmm. right okay uh, as a from salary because then you want as high participation as possible right mm-hmm. almost 100% uh um, but if that's also not possible like you want to give freedom to the employee either you keep it in ctc or if that's also not possible because you then there is a backlash from the employee that hey why did you receive reduce my take home so other thing could be like hey we are paying for you up front uh but will be able to deduct from your salary in 6 months or maybe 10 months mm-hmm. or maybe 12 months so then it doesn't pinch the employee as well and but you have to motivate employees so that at least 80% of the people are participating if you want the policy to go on for a long period of time otherwise i can tell you if 20% 30% people are participating please be rest assured your policy will not sustain and it will bleed and next year you will let go of that policy so and it's not good for the insurance company also right so so that is one thing uh, which you should keep in mind if you are if you want to offer parental cover but it's a very good benefit actually again from parents perspective because our previous generation did not take insurance uh, hmm. uh, retail health uh, who's who i mean for example if your father or mother were government employees they are little lucky because government hmm. was giving that cover but private employees did not did not have that cover and uh, and when you become 60 plus it's very hard to because you have some yeah, pre existing yeah. diseases and that's where the benefit of giving group policies that pre existing diseases are covered so uh, it's a very good benefit if you can't afford try to ensure that you maybe you can give it from the uh, from the uh, this thing uh, from deduct from their salary and give them a chance to take take this benefit mm-hmm. lastly some of the uh, Uh, random terms and conditions sometimes which i've seen in the policy which you should try not to have okay so i i missed out on the ivf treatment so ivf is something which is coming up which is pretty normal these days again mm. it's related to maternity so please see please ensure that you add get that added in the benefits policy if you can so there you can either it's very expensive so either at least you can give it under the maternity package which you have so mm. maternity limit up to uh 75000 or 50% of your sum insured you can design you can add get that added generally insurance in insurance standard policy is not there then there are other terms like okay. uh lgbtq and all of that so you can if you are very pro diversity inclusion so you can try to get that added mm-hmm. generally they are not there so you have to get 
and you don't have to get charged you don't get charged for that and then well baby expense coverage uh, you can get that added in your policy like once the baby is born so that there are some expenses related to baby um mm. and baby should be covered from day one um so that is also very critical um uh, so sorry, sorry, i had a follow up question there uh, isn't uh, so if the baby is born isn't uh, so what where is the expense coming from is it part of the maternity limit or <coughs> the baby gets added and from your entire let's say 3 lakh pool it's coming yeah so baby uh, uh, is not part of the mat- like once the baby is born so baby mm-hmm. becomes a member of the policy uh, so you, okay uh, you okay. have to create the health card of the baby so of course if you don't have the name of the baby sometimes we don't have right so mm-hmm. so just put like baby of your wife's name mm-hmm. right so and then or if you are the uh, uh, one who are going through delivery so you can mm-hmm. mention under your name right baby of your name so then uh, 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 you have to reach out so if you're using a tech platform there again mm-hmm. you can get that added in the app add your family member um and then it gets approved by the hr uh if you not then you reach out to your hr they will co- contact the, the hr will contact and as you as an hr can get it added get the health card generated it takes almost 5 6 hours um but don't get like pretty because baby if it will be in the hospital for at least mm. one or two days mm. sometimes people panic or a baby health card has not come because if it, it's going to take two t- two more days to discharge from the hospital mm. it's okay if it takes a day also to get a health card but you get a health health card generated and then in the health card uh, uh, it will be part of the as you rightly said 3 lakh cover separate three, uh, sure. i mean floater cover yeah got it yeah. got it uh so that's one thing yeah. last thing i think sometimes insurance company insurance policies have seen uh, reasonable and customary deduction uh deductions charges so which means that insurance company can deduct say 5% 10% at their will if the claim ratios are bleeding which which i personally don't feel is customer friendly uh so mm-hmm. just make sure that in the clause you just just do a quick search that uh if you have reasonable and customary charges clause so get that removed in your policy from your consultant yeah i think that's a bit about i think we went a little deeper here yeah, on this yeah hey that was that was awesome sanjeev thanks and you super helpful for folks listening and i i want to touch on one last thing on this uh, it might get tactical see people think that um, let's say the the tech platforms pass care right uh, these are the guys who are actually doing the settlement right because you're using the tool to upload but that's not true that is a tpa right who is actually doing this do you want to explain to people what exactly is like there's an insurance provider there's a bank this tpa and how and there's let's say broker or a platform how are they interacting yeah so yeah you i think rightly said that we are not processing the claim we are facilitate we are our job is to facilitate the claim uh and help you out make sure that claims are so happening on time so so we have a tech platform and then we have a broking firm as well right so as as a platform uh we sort of integrate with insurance companies and the tps right so mm-hmm. we have say for example your insurance company is say bajaj allianz or tata aig or magma hdi or icic right so or neva bupa so we do like an api integration with them and if there is a tpa sometimes they also have in house tpa like bajaj or insurers like that mm-hmm. and then or if they don't have they are like external tpas which is so dedicated tpa companies who have eventually integration with the insurance companies uh, mm-hmm. to process the claim they have deal with the insurance company to process the claim so uh, they are also like mediasist or say health india or mm-hmm. paramount or vidal there are some these are some of them right so we have api integrations with bo- both of them right so okay. with the insurance company the the integration helps us in fetching your additions relations getting your health card mm-hmm. very quickly mm-hmm. and your prepaid wallet which generally uh, insurers uh, you keep some wallet with the insurance company 
right? Mm-hmm. Prepaid. It's like you keep in say Paytm wallet, like which you can use to add people in your policy. They call it CD balance. So there's a tech okay. I mean, yeah. shorter term called CD balance. Right? Mm-hmm. So you keep some money in there. So you get that if because of the integration, you get that information real time, right? Then because of my integration with their in-house TP or the external TP is that you get the details of the claims that are going on real time. Then the employee can file reimbursement claim from Pascara. So through the, and the data flows directly through the APIs to the TPA. So that is what the platform does. And it's, my job is just to not provide you the platform. My job is to be your advisor. I am your mm-hmm. consultant who uh, works on the like pre-placement part. Uh, we, I, I'll work on your behalf and I represent you in, in the market uh, to get you best of the best uh, terms and conditions based on your budget as I started my discussion with and I will design your policy. That's my job profile to sort of ensure that I give you the best in your uh, the uh, budget. Plus, I design it in such a way, a good consultant designs in such a way that your policy doesn't bleed also uh, and you get, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's my job. And then my job uh, as Pascal is to ensure that throughout the year, your employees and you are served well by the insurance company and by the team. Got it. Got it. Uh, so again, uh, um, a quick segue to that. I think you already covered quite a bit of it, Sanjit. I uh, wanted to check, like, let's say uh, I'm I'm an HR, right? I've been, I've been given a mandate as part of my OKR by my CEO that I need to onboard an HR, uh, sorry, uh, an insurance tech platform, right? I need to jazz up my insurance. I need to get a better one. Uh, what advice would you have for me? Like, what do I keep in mind um, when I'm going about choosing this tech partner? And I'm a startup, right? I'm very tech friendly. Uh, I obviously want things to be very tech forward. Yeah. So, yeah, I think one is, uh, I think in the right partner. Uh, so, the, especially it depends on the consultant who, is, who are talking to, who's, who's talking to you is he or mm-hmm. she thinking from your perspective and your company's perspective. Uh, that's very critical. Second is, I mean, uh, there are, people uh in you should see the product demo uh, for mm-hmm. sure uh, and get comfortable with the product uh, mm-hmm. uh, i mean it's very easy to create a front end uh, from dashboard and uh, uh, the mobile app so but actually it has to work uh, for mm-hmm. you right so so it's not just the front end skin that you need. You need a strong back end as well, right? So which mm-hmm. which works pretty smoothly. So uh, in terms of the product, um, and uh, I think and also the benefit values that whatever benefit values and not only that you should go and actually click and see how you can use those benefits, right? So then mm-hmm. uh, do you get real time CD balance update? Do you, are you able to get health cards quickly issued uh, once mm. you make changes in your dashboard? Are you able to see claims analytics in your dashboard, uh, mm. right? And if you're offering, let's say, health checkups or say doctor consultations, are you able to see their analytics um, in your dashboard uh, or getting insights automated through the platform, right? And from the employee's perspective, is the experience user-friendly, right? Plus, it is actually... Uh, I mean, it's not like just for the sake of the benefits are added, but they're actually usable, mm. right? Mm. So I think if you go a little deeper, um, you can uh, you can get some insights around that, uh, and you can take a conscious call. What's what works, right? Um, and the person who's who are, who are dealing who's dealing with you is the agenda. Of the person is to make get your business, or the agenda is to help you out. So mm. that's, that's very critical as well. Right. So, because you don't want your policy to go in a bad shape later on. Right. So that's one critical thing. And, uh, I think these are two couple of very critical points. And then do they really have integrations with insurance companies mm. and TPS? So how do you judge that? It's pretty hard, but, uh, maybe just in doing the evaluation, just figuring out, figure out if possible. Mm. 
at the end, and as someone who's actually going through this myself, uh, I would just add it's help. It's very helpful to sort of have a doc ready with everything that you're looking for. Right? I want this. I want this. I want this. And playing out the scenarios there. That okay. I, employee edition. It's integrated. Uh, cards. Yeah. One click. I get the card. Right. And then do check, check, yeah. check, check. Cross lot. Right? Yeah. Yes, that's you should have a checklist for everything. Right. While I'm vendor evaluation. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's pretty standard. But but again, I'm surprised. Uh, so a lot of decisions is taken ad hoc. Yeah, uh, that should not happen. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, great, Sanjay. So that's a. I'll take a segue into. You're talking of the people, right? The people who's actually sort of, I would say, selling. Uh, the person whom you're working with to get, get the the plan or or whatever that is, right? Uh, which is basically your customer success. And uh, right. and as somebody who set up and way back, uh, 2017, 18 days of Darwin Box. Uh, one of the things that my founder told me back then that said that, um, and I was stressing out a lot, right? He told me that, look, dude, what's the worst that can happen? Nobody's going to die, right? Yeah, you can do it a little later. Um, that's not the case with you. <laughs> so <laughs> it, <laughs> the worst that can happen is a lot, right? So um, again, I'm sort of taking a very different segue and talking of customer success, customer experience, because that's something you're passionate about also. Uh, how do you how do you operate in that way? What are the principles that you operate with when you're dealing with this very emotionally charged and driven context that you operate in? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think it's a very good question. So, uh, uh, and it's very critical for our our, our business operations as well. So, uh, so one thing is we have to like what I tell my team, uh, and also it's so first from our core values perspective, the first mm -hmm. thing, first term in our company's core value is actually customer delight. Uh, uh, and I principally, I don't say it for everyone, but I personally feel that customer is God. My house runs because of my customers, right? So uh, one part is like it, that That same principle with the same principle, I, I ran my previous company terms with and with the mm -hmm. same principle, uh, running this company as well um uh, so one thing uh not only from the claim of course claim is like it's a very emergency situation many of the times sometimes it's the planned surgery as well right but mm -hmm. uh like for example cataract and all of those things maternity is planned right but many of the times if there is an accident or anything it's an emergency at that time, I think the most important part for us to be available. Um, and I tell my mm. team that uh, you should, and see, it's a service industry, right? So um, sometimes there's not only two parameters. One is uh, insurance and uh, the TPA, but there is third person also involved, which is the hospital. So which mm. is also totally yeah. out of our control. Right. So, yeah. and they have integrations with the TPS. So, and I, I, I've, I've experienced myself that hospital is a process of six to seven hours of discharge. And then by the time you are running around in the hospital, um, you start end up giving up. And even if in that case, uh, hospital sends the data to the TPA and it, if it takes time and many of the times hospital says that, Hey, we have already sent it to the TPA. I'm telling you, but sometimes it's still under the process Then you start mm -hmm. becoming impatient as an, as an end user. Right. And then it starts coming back to us, which is, uh, the consultant who brought in that, um, uh, mm -hmm. service provider, uh, so in the best of the best case. So what I tell is even if the customer is impatient, uh, at that point of time, and many of, unfortunately, uh, many of the things are out of our control because we don't have an ownership of the hospital and all. Uh, so we, I tell them that you have to communicate with the customer in a very high frequency when things are going wrong. Mm. It's very counterintuitive, but generally what I've seen is people stop picking up the call when they feel that things are not going right. Uh, but I say that just hear the customer out, uh, mm. and be communicate more mm. when things are going bad rather than communicating more when things are going good when things are going mm. good they are going good you don't need to yeah. <laughs> communicate a lot at that time right so so and that happens see i mean if there are 100 claims i will i'll i'll say that uh, the 
the systems and all of those things in the back end uh, with the hospitals and dps and all they're not perfect right so one out of or two out of 100 claims we will have that challenge and the point is are you available and are you fighting it hard and is your mm-hmm. does your customer know that you are trying your best in that situation so so that uh, 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 that's all we need to do i mean that's all we can do also so mm-hmm. and and from the servicing the hr's perspective i think living by your cadences is very critical um, and uh, being available because many of the times as employees don't look at the data and the whatever they're getting they reach out to the hr uh, mm-hmm. And then maybe the claim would be 2 a.m., 3 a.m. We have seen HRs who are so passionate about employee satisfaction. Uh, one of our customers, uh, uh, she was so passionate. She made sure that we also wake up whenever there is a need. And we were there and she was still not satisfied because that means her standard is so high for, and mm-hmm. she's so passionate about uh, her employee's satisfaction. So, uh, but we try, we, we, we do try our best and the most important thing is to be there that's all i think mm-hmm. that's all you can do to ensure that things turn around and things do turn around i mean at the end of the day claim will get processed um, and we have to be there and we have to be available that's that's the core principle that i'm carrying when it comes to servicing the customers mm-hmm. right right and big big plus one to that uh, sanchit availability as somebody who went through it last year uh, my mom was in the ICU for like a month. Uh, the only thing I looked for was availability. In fact, uh, in my evaluation sheet, the first one that I have is, uh, will the people be available at 2, 12 to 2 a.m. in the morning? Because like, right. shit gets wrong at really odd hours. And then if the person is not available, then the whole thing is pointless. Correct. correct, correct. Yeah. 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 And that uh, goes, I mean, I tell my team as well. So if there is a claim... I'm personally available for all my clients. We have now 2,000 customers, uh, but if I get an email, my response rate is almost 15, 20 minutes. I loop in my team who looks after escalation. So, mm-hmm. I mean, but it starts from me, right? So, but I try my best, whatever we can do. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's, that's great. I mean, uh, at that point, again, like as someone who was close to it, I, I saw what doctors were going through. It's out of my respect and everything for doctors is the next the hours and everything that they put like there's there's no time right i mean at three in the night a call comes they have to go right and this is kind of very adjacent yeah yeah uh again sanchit i um i i um i'll take another very different uh route uh the on the next question i i read something that you wrote on linkedin it was a while back that uh, culture is how employees feel on monday mornings uh I, I strongly believe in it, but but I want to want to hear your take because culture isn't just about money, food, fun, right? We we boil it down to these very small things, but it's not. It's, it's a lot more. And as a multiple time founder, uh, what would what is your eighty twenty on culture, like uh, especially at a at a startup scenario? Yeah, so I think uh, very. Very, very fundamental question. So, uh, which I have also pondered upon a lot. Uh, how can we sort of ensure that uh, we have a great, what is great culture? I mean, of course, it's not about free food, right? So, uh, it starts from CEO. I mean, I'll tell you that um, it actually starts from the founders uh, or maybe the CEO or the uh, the leadership team because they are the ones who and also CHRO, right? So, uh, what kind of culture you want to set, right? So, I think it's as a human being we want purpose, right? So, what's my purpose? Um, and my purpose is to build, say, a, a great customer friendly organization at scale, right? So, mm-hmm. um, my team want everyone wants a direction, right? So as a CEO, uh, my job is to ensure that making sure that everyone in the team has a purpose and align every team's purpose with the whole company's purpose. So uh, having a strong clarity of what we need to do um, 
what i realized with time is also that what do i need to achieve in next 12 months or next 6 months because we are a startup right uh, giving a strong sense of purpose of company is very critical but at the same time then how does it boil down to different teams is sometimes many of the teams are not customer facing as well so they feel mm. okay whatever sales it sales teams problem to uh, run the show uh okay it's it, it takes uh, if you're in dev team say it's okay i, I know it's going to take more than one month to develop right mm. so but if i align the whole it starts from aligning the leadership if i align the whole team uh to a purpose right hey we have to become profitable say for example right by this mm. and then even then in that case if you have to do cost cutting then everyone will support you because mm. the purpose is this, we are running and uh, we have we have an aim right so which we are living by so and uh, it's very important for the leadership the ceo or the chro to create that purpose uh, or boils down to kpis or whatever right uh, but qualitatively what is our goal uh, we have to uh, that's very critical as well then uh, once you have the purpose so i think people look for uh, recognition so as a as a human being mm-hmm. i think my fundamentally i want to be recognized <laughs> for my efforts mm-hmm. right so either it is so there are two types of a uh, way of recognition which is a social recognition and then financial recognition right so because i ultimately i need money to run my house so mm. uh, if you want to give the sense of purpose at a larger level i feel that uh, especially from the startup perspective we should have a very generous stock policy right stock uh, mm. employee stock policies uh, because see it's not only about the amount of stocks it's also about the so i say that you are building a township or you are building a village right it some people will have a villa but some people will have a flat uh, or a small plot in it right so but the idea of having a plot itself is or a small even if it's a 1 bhk it's fine but i have a i have mm-hmm. a property in that town is is more right. important so if you are part of the company and even if you are a very small owner of the company itself is a big big uh, it changes the mindset of the team and uh, i think with the purpose that becomes the second very important point that your every individual especially i, I always say that your top 100 people are actually the co-founders uh, uh, in your team right and definitely they as many of them should have stocks in the company uh, because see sometimes we are into linear jobs so by linear jobs i mean like mai if i mean say like i i am i am i am not contributing non linearly to in the growth of the company so in that case my salary doesn't grow non linearly my salary grows slow so for example if you are in sdr or a sales right kind of a role but if you have an equity in the company uh then the value mm. of the company definitely increases non linearly so then you can take benefit mm. of that and you should get the benefit if you are joining early in the company second so purpose and recognition so mm. we should have a um, i think as an hr we can play an important role in creating a culture of recognition when it comes to uh, to the to the employees and the fundamentally the recognition should happen publicly uh, and feedback should happen in private i always feel mm. that um, like uh, sometimes we end up shouting at people at the public that doesn't make sense so uh, and the recognition should happen in public if you are using say teams microsoft or slack just mm. if somebody is doing a good job just put it in general right so mm. and congratulate them in front of the whole company so it motivates everyone to everyone to do better lastly i think uh uh, uh our most important is i say the goal setting and the purpose and then the then being reasonable in terms of based on give them the prediction of what, where they will land if what they will do in terms of mm-hmm. financial as well right so i have been very clear that if we reach the numbers of the company that we have taken uh then definitely you'll get this much right so give them some predictability around that and be transparent so transparency 
is mm. a very important part in creating a great culture so yeah so that's that's what my take i mean it's very subjective mm. but uh, and changes from founder to founder but but i feel that people get more aligned uh, and they work harder actually mm. if you if you have a sense of purpose and you you are being recognized yeah thanks thanks i mean it's true it's fundamentally some of those fundamental building blocks will always be there like this intrinsic extrinsic recognition uh the equity mindset um lovely lovely um uh next question sanjeev then this is a uh, this is a selfish question honestly from my side and i know again a lot of hrs will will want this answer see and this is like uh, i'm throwing you back to your town script days where you've seen so many events being folded out being planned uh, one of the things that we do which our community is uh, or rather uh, people from my uh, community is we have to throw the most kick ass amazing offsites <laughs> and uh, uh, an offsite done great is amazing and offsite done bad is really bad right uh, has those bitter taste in your mouth uh, what would sort of again be some 80 20 actionable points um that you would advise let's say an hr right uh, maybe somebody is doing it for the first time so you should keep in mind that will eventually have like an amazing team bonding experience for their for their company yes most tricky question of the day and so selfish because i know i also have to do it you know, very soon so yeah i think i think i think ranak i feel that you are very quantitative when it comes to your approach of creating a checklist so uh one of my colleagues um uh, so vikas he keeps on referring to this book called checklist manifesto so i should write down as a atul bhai atul i think atul gawande right so he is the author uh so he always say that we should write it down and have a checklist with the clear cut uh, say uh timelines to it and make those timelines tra- as transparent as you can with the other stakeholders that are involved right mm-hmm. so uh, um, there i see i think the again it starts from the budget <laughs> everything starts from yeah. the company's yeah. budget so uh my personal experience has been uh again giving predictability in terms of what people are getting into and having a very structured approach uh predictable and structured means that uh choosing the right venue is the most critical part uh if you are going through uh for an offsite it uh it doesn't have to be outside say if you're if you're from generally luckily um in in india all of the cities uh there are good resorts and good places mm-hmm. nearby to the cities as well right so bangalore has quite a many pune has quite a many and bombay gurgaon as well so there uh what i've seen is that if the traveling time is less people like that <laughs> so that's one thing which i felt and also the venue is i think the most critical part and then having the right agenda uh, schedule uh, was very critical is because we also do it annually and then uh, some activities uh, if we can do to like bring collaboration so more than sessions people like workshops so um mm-hmm. where maybe uh of course sessions see if you're doing an annual, annual planning and all those things you need sessions but uh and i mean sometimes these offsites are to get the alignment done with the team right so mm-hmm. alignment again create the sense of purpose with the leadership so uh and if it's a proper proper offsite then it's only fun then there workshop where try to do cross team uh interactions mm. or um uh, try as much as you can so that helps a lot uh and also uh identify the people who are the upcoming in your company and then give them a chance to be on the stage right and to be the face as well mm. right so that also has helps a lot right so invest in the future and then uh in terms of the event so if you if it's a very large scale i think it's better to have an event organizer rather than doing everything by yourself because it becomes see mm-hmm. i mean we are good at what we do right so that's why we hire consultants on multiple stages but yeah again i have three four vendors evaluate them on multiple parameters is very critical as well but try to have consultants 
in case it's a larger setup. Uh, if it's a 10, 20 people, then definitely we can do it by ourselves. Got it. Got it. Thanks. That's helpful. That's very helpful. Cool. Uh, Sanjay, I do we had a shorter time, but uh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. This was very helpful. Uh, hoped people who are listening in got some actual actionable points, learned a little from what insurance is, insure tech is. But uh, uh, in wrapping up, Sanjit, uh, you know, where do people find you, uh, as care and any closing thoughts? Where do people find me online? Yeah, um, online on what, LinkedIn the, or yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm very uh, active on LinkedIn, and uh, especially uh, if I get to know, I'm getting a chance to interact with HR. So uh, very swift in terms of uh, making sure that I'm replying to you very quickly. If you can have a turnaround time of less than one hour, so <laughs> please feel free to message me anytime on LinkedIn or uh, uh, email is there and I'm pretty active on every, actually every, on all social medias, but uh, LinkedIn is more and maybe Twitter as well. If you're active on Twitter, I'm happy to introduce, get introduced there as well. But uh, working for HRs uh, and if anyone, anyone needs any help, uh, apart from uh, any, uh, my usual job as well, because luckily I got a chance to connect with a lot of CEOs, uh, and also people like Pranak who yeah. are in HR leadership. So maybe I can make cross introductions whenever you want as well. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Sachit. Uh, thank you, Sachit. This was great. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Ranak. Thank you so much yeah. for inviting me and giving me a chance. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.